Every year, Medscape releases a physician lifestyle and happiness report showing us how happy or unhappy physicians are. In 2023, 26% of physicians reported that they were very or somewhat unhappy outside of work. At work, the data is even worse. 36% of physicians report being very or somewhat unhappy. So why are so many doctors unhappy and what can we do about it? The landscape of physician happiness has seen major changes over the last few short years. Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, the COVID-19 pandemic did deal a significant blow to physician happiness. But what surprises me a lot is that it hasn't actually rebounded back even at the end of 2023. Prior to the pandemic, only 14% of physicians said they were very to somewhat unhappy at work. And as of 2023, this number has reached 36%. Similar things have happened outside of work. So prior to the pandemic, we were at 8% reporting being somewhat to very unhappy outside of work. And now it's 26% in 2023. So let's dig into the top reasons why doctors are unhappy and how physicians can live happier, more fulfilling lives. The first reason doctors are unhappy is a growing lack of purpose and meaning in their work and their personal lives. Now, this is occurring more often for two main reasons. The first is that Many physicians spent as much as two thirds of their days charting to meet hospital and insurance company requirements. And unsurprisingly, Medscape reports that the number one reason why physicians said that they were burnt out was quote, too many bureaucratic tasks. That includes things like charting. The number two reason for physician burnout was too many hours at work. Now, while saving lives and making major breakthroughs in patient care or research is the dream, the day-to-day -day reality of being a doctor is usually a lot less sexy. The massive workload, much of which is paperwork, coupled with the long hours can cause even the most resilient of physicians to possibly lose sight of why they chose this path in the first place. With so many hours spent on the job, there's only so much time left over to focus on personal hobbies, interests, practice mindfulness, exercise, build quality relationships. And actually, speaking of relationships, that brings me to point number two. Having no or very few strong relationships contributes to physician happiness, or rather, lack thereof. Good social relationships are the most consistent predictor of a happy life. Research continues to suggest over and over again that social connections are the cornerstone of happiness. In addition to contributing to happiness, Strong relationships are linked with improved health and longevity. This super famous decades long Harvard study found that positive relationships were the top contributing factor to living a happy, healthy, and long life. Remember, Medscape reports that the number two reason for physician burnout is too many hours at work. Physicians, and especially those in very lifestyle challenging and demanding specialties, are notorious for neglecting not only themselves, but also their social relationships outside of work. Medscape lists some of the happiest specialties as rheumatology, ENT, and endocrinology, all of which are known for their relatively better quality of life. These are some of the specialties that have more flexibility and offer physicians more time to spend doing what they love with the people they love. But note that the average number of hours worked is not the only factor at play here, since there are other specialties like dermatology and ophthalmology that typically work fewer hours yet are not listed as high amongst the happiest specialties. As important as relationships are outside of work, they matter a lot on the job as well. A 2022 study found that patient connection and visible impact are common traits among happy physicians. Strong doctor-patient relationships improve job satisfaction of the doctors and the health outcomes of their patients. And good relationships with your colleagues can also boost physician happiness as connection and belonging are universal human needs Doctors are humans too. Making time to connect with colleagues, patients, friends, and family leads to a strong sense of community, connection, and belonging, all of which are essential to a happy and fulfilling life and career. Another contributing factor to physician happiness is finances and debt. One of the most popular and conflicting statements is that money can't buy happiness. But as it turns out, money is a factor that contributes to happiness across the world and for medical professionals. Wealthier countries in general with higher GDP per capita are happier countries and the same tends to go for individuals. Back in 2010, researchers at Princeton published an article about happiness and income and a lot of us oversimplified the article to say that, hey, happiness plateaus at $75,000 a year. Not totally true because it just decreases in slope. It continues to rise, but at a lower rate beyond $75,000 a year. And since then, there has been another study suggesting that happiness 
begins to plateau around $10 million in net worth. Now, while the slope correlating money to happiness decreases after $75,000, it doesn't flatten, meaning there still is a positive correlation between money and happiness. Now, making $200,000 a year makes you happier than making $100,000 a year, but not to the same extent as doubling your $40,000 per year income. Still, to this day, 75K is the number that tends to be thrown around, but we're not really accounting for the years of inflation since that article was written. Now, you might be thinking that, hey, physicians, they're making multiple six figures a year in income, so that can't be the problem. It's a little bit more nuanced than that. It comes down to consistently decreasing salaries, lingering debt, and poor spending habits. Now, let's break those down. The first is that inflation continues to negatively impact physician salaries, which consistently have not kept up with inflation. Physician compensation did rise by 14% between 2017 to 2022 to around $391,000 from $343,000. But accounting for inflation, the real average compensation in 2022 was less than $325,000, nearly a 20K decrease in purchasing power. Number two, doctors on average leave medical school with over a quarter million dollars in debt. And that's a number that continues to rise even though salaries decline. And sometimes this can take many years to pay off, especially for those who have poor spending habits. That brings us to number three, which is lastly a lack of financial education, which leads these doctors to have those poor spending habits, which makes it difficult for them to get rid of that debt. There are way too many residents and young doctors that begin spending like they're making the big bucks when they should be focused on lowering their debt as soon as possible. They spend to their limits since they've lived for so many years sacrificing as a broke student and a mostly broke resident, and then they buy their toys and start living a fancy lifestyle rather than focusing on paying down the debt and making smart investments. It's easy to judge them, but it's really hard when all your friends around you who didn't go to med school, they're living it up and you've worked so hard and you feel like you deserve those nice things. All right, next, let's talk about the health of physicians. You'd think that a career dedicated to understanding how the body works and what it needs for optimal health would mean that physicians are impeccable at taking care of their own health. Sadly, usually not the case. According to the 2023 Medscape Happiness Report, 43% of physicians admitted they only sometimes look after their own health and wellness, and 17% admitted they rarely or never look after their own health. If you've ever experienced a serious health scare, like I did back when I was 18 with IBD, you know just how much health is directly connected to your happiness. So why do so many physicians neglect their health when they are so familiar with its negative impacts? And I think this all goes back to that rising impact of physician burnout and the stigma in healthcare around overworking yourself and that dedication to your job in order to succeed. This starts early on during pre-med as getting into medical school is extremely competitive and that pressure doesn't let up when you're in medical school or residency either. Students continually neglect their health they can kind of get away with it because they're young and resilient, but they take their bad habits with them through their careers with their lack of sleep, nutrition, and physical activity. Now it's easy to judge these physicians, shake your finger at them, say, hey, you guys should be doing better. But remember that 2022 Medscape report found that 47% of doctors were suffering from burnout, up from 42 from the previous year, and the main contributing factor to physician burnout is too many hours at work. So then it's not surprising that doctors struggle to prioritize the time for their own mental and physical health. Med students, residents, and even attending physicians are notorious for neglecting their sleep. And surprise, surprise, research demonstrates that sleep deprivation is associated with lower levels of happiness. Getting adequate quality sleep leads to an overall healthier and better life. And it's been a game changer for me because I was one of those med students and residents that was super sleep deprived. And even in, in high school and college, it's like something that we took pride in, right? And by changing my relationship to sleep and optimizing it, go check out my video with experimenting with Dr. Huberman's uh, recommendations, life is totally transformed. And lastly, the lack of physical activity contributes to that physician unhappiness. 10% of doctors reported that they never exercise and 20% said that they only managed to exercise once per week. Physicians know the impact that physical activity has on health, yet a third are neglecting exercise, and another 36% only exercise two to three times per week. Exercise is a direct determinant of happiness, and it's been linked to decreased levels of depression and anxiety. Now this is wild, just the order of magnitude here, because we're so focused on other factors that are important for health, but exercise is underappreciated. It's so tightly connected to physical health that Going from low fitness to below average results in a 50% reduction in mortality over a decade. And going from low to above average fitness is a 60 to 70% reduction in mortality. The WHO recommends two and a half to five hours of moderate intensity aerobic exercise 
or one and a quarter hours of high intensity physical activity per week. I'd call that the bare minimum. And if you're really focused on optimizing your health, you're gonna have to put in more hours than that. And look, I know it can feel impossible when you're super swamped. Finding time for exercise is all about time management priorities, killing two birds with one stone. And if you think you're too busy to exercise, we made a video about just that on the Mental Insiders channel, because I promise you it is possible, even when you're sleeping only a few hours a day and you can't imagine doing anything. I actually feel that the best way to incorporate exercise when you're super busy is to incorporate it into your commute. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Van Powers and their Urban Glide e-bike. Going back to residency, where I'd been busier than I had ever been in my life with surgical residency, plus the two businesses I was running, plus a relationship and yada yada, I was still able to exercise most days per week because I would bike to and from the hospital. Now I did pay a premium to live closer to the hospital, an extra like $200 a month, but it was worth it for my health. So rather than getting in a car and driving, as most of us do, or even getting on a bus, public transit, getting on a bike meant that I could exercise. And the thing I love about the Van Powers e-bike is that on most days when I wanna work out, I can have the assistance at a lower level. They have all the way from one to five. And at one, you're putting in a lot more power yourself to propel you at five, the battery and the electric motor is working its magic and really boosting you along. So on most days when I want that workout, I can have a one and go to and from the hospital and get a better workout. And then those other days when I'm really just, maybe I have knee pain or I'm just like not feeling it, then I can just use the throttle and, <laughs> and accelerate without pedaling at all. Or I can have a higher assistance setting such as five or four, depending on where I wanna be. The bike comes packaged very nicely and actually partially assembled. So the assembly for me took less than 30 minutes. You have this step through design to the frame, which makes it very easy to get on and off your bike. Now, the way I'm using it right now is a little bit different because I no longer commute to and from work. I work from home. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I'm a cyclist. I cycle a lot to get a workout in and I want it to suck and I ride a road bike. There's no electric motor or anything because it's not about commuting to and from work quickly or conveniently. It's just about, you know, the uh, cardiorespiratory health benefits and trying to increase my VO2 max because of the research uh, and the benefits for longevity that we already discussed. But if I want to go cycling with a family member or a friend or my girlfriend, and they may not be as hardcore about cycling, but I still want to get a workout in, then we can put them on the Van Powers Urban Glide e-bike and they can smoke me because this thing has 70 miles of range and goes up to 20 miles an hour. It has a 690 watt hour battery and a 500 watt hub motor. And that's enough to have a good time. It has a suspension that makes it very comfortable to ride and you can actually lock it out. So you can have a nice softer suspension if you want with 80 millimeters of travel, or you can lock it and make the front end very rigid. A Cadillac of bicycles, because it is, it's obviously very heavy. It's like 60 to 70 pounds with the battery and the motor and all that stuff. So, you know, it has a heft to it, but then the seat also has 30 millimeters of travel with a, a built-in suspension. All right, few things I really like about the bike. So first of all, your assistance is adjustable, right? So from neutral, no assistance at all. It's like, if you really want to work out all the way to five, if you want almost no workout because it gives you so much assistance. And in the middle is probably where you're going to keep it most of the time where you get a little bit of a hybrid, some workout, but also some assistance. You have a throttle right here that even without pedaling, it'll start going, which is uh, for when you really don't want to be doing any workout. Bell built in. Suspension here is adjustable. So it can lock out in one setting. There's no motion at all. If you want a stiffer ride, don't want to lose any kinetic energy. And then it's easy to get on and off because you have that walkthrough design. There you have it. One thing I also appreciate is I remember doing an away rotation and not having a car at this institution, but I had a bike and I was pretty close to the hospital, but going to and from getting groceries was such a pain. And eventually what I did is I bought a rack, put it on my bicycle and that made things a lot easier. But luckily the Van Powers Urban Glide comes with a rear bike rack and with lights. So you're gonna be safer, you know, at all hours of the day. And you can attach your groceries with your pannier bags on the back. They have three levels of the bike. I have the pro, the metal tier. And I think that's actually a really good bang for your buck because you're getting a lot of the benefits, things like having hydraulic disc brakes. And the pedal assist is also based on torque on this trim. So the more power you put into the pedals, the more the electric motor assists you. Whereas with their lower level bike, it's just based on speed. It comes with a six year warranty. And if you wanna check it out, use the coupon code Jabal for 10% off your purchase. Link in the description. Thanks for watching my friends. If you enjoyed this video, then you're gonna enjoy the pros and cons of tracking your blood sugar or this other video. See you there.